there's a big debate here about um, what what forced conversion is all about. Have you ever seen about people trying to convert others by force? Especially this one is very common in um, uh, in Islamic states and also um, uh, in different kinds of places. And even I think in, in India, you will find uh, there are so many false uh, forced conversions and uh, it's like they are forcing you and even in Christianity we are seeing the same trend also trying to come and uh, we may call it a form of coercion it's like I, I, I try to push you and pin you down so that you can accept my kind of religion so is this really good and uh, is uh, is it applicable for Christianity because you may say uh, I was only trying to convert this person, so I tricked them into Christianity. Maybe I forced them, I, I threatened them. Like uh, in Christianity, a lot of uh, threats happen. Like for example, you threaten someone and tell them you're going to burn in hell, so you better convert. So that person is going to become a Christian, not based on understanding, but based on fear of what is going to happen. That's also another form of coercion. And also we can see... There are other people who uh, coerce others and they and they and they push others into the uh, into believing. I may call it believing, but let me just use the word into Christianity. There are other people who can coerce you in things like, um, do you want to have a good life? Do you want to buy a car? You know, God is going to give you a car. He's going to give you this and this, and and you kind of feel. Uh, because I want a car, I want a good life, I want health, I want this. Let me just become a Christian so that I can have these things. That's also another form of coercion. And uh, this one is very common nowadays. Or even somebody telling you, hey, you, we, you'll go to heaven, there'll be goodies there. And and you, you become a Christian not based on understanding what Jesus did for you, but you become a Christian based on the goodies that you've heard about heaven or the bad things that you've heard about hell or maybe just because everybody at home is a christian so they tell you come on you can't be just be left home let's go together let's be in church together so i want to speak about this because i know it's really confusing uh, especially when it comes to conversion and the others who just tell people this is the Romans rod have you ever heard the Romans rod you see uh, we are all sinners we deserve to die then repeat this after me and then blah 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 and pam you think oh I've tricked 10 people today to become Christians into becoming Christians now are those people really saved are those people really saved because we have to understand that forced conversion is the use of pressure it's like you're using pressure or force or threats to make someone abandon his or her beliefs for those of another religion all right or another faith and a forced conversion results in the adoption of different uh, religions or abandonment of all religions it's like I've, I've i've tricked you and i've made you to get out from all the other religions and just concentrate on mine but this one is more so under duress or under some stress. It's like I've become a Christian, not because it was my will, but I've come become a Christian because I wanted to avoid all these commotions. Maybe you've gone to a place and everybody uh, is holding a Bible. They are praying every day and they are Christians. And, and uh, you just feel like I'm out of place. Let me just become a Christian so that, you know, I'm not really out of place. Then that is uh, converting out of duress. Okay. And likewise, we see something else also called false conversions, uh, which are based on, uh, 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 um, or maybe totalitarianism. Like, in this house, all of us, we have to be Christians. Or in this house, all of us, we have to be Muslim or uh, Hindus or things like that. You see, it's like a totalitarian kind of coercion, all right? Some forced conversion. It's like a cult. You know, when you push it that way, it becomes like a cult. It's like you have no option out. So you get out the whole aspect of the free will. Are you seeing the point here? And uh, uh, when we look at it at a Christian point of view, we see this is not how a Christian should be converted. Someone should be converted to Christianity. Uh, simply just, uh, simply put, we may say that a false conversion 
is absolutely wrong for Christianity. Yes, the other religions, they can do whatever they want because uh, whoever they believe, let them do their, according to how they do their things. But uh, if it's following Jesus Christ, then this is very wrong. You should not coerce someone into uh, becoming a Christian and things like that. So growing the ranks of a religion should not involve any, any type of coercion. When you want to pull someone into Christianity, don't pull them via coercion. Often, forced conversion doesn't even work. It doesn't work. And those who are forced into a different religion may act as if they have converted from the outside, but secretly they remain loyal to their former religion. You can see, you can have maybe somebody uh, lives with you and then they, they, they feel that... Uh, I have to become a Christian because everybody here is a Christian. But deep down within themselves, they still believe in whatever thing that they used to believe in. It's just the outward appearance. And this is the same thing which is happening in most churches nowadays. You see that uh, some, somebody is being pushed so much. And, and uh, like you see in churches, you ask, hey brother, are you really saved? Because you're doing this and you're doing this. So I will end up doing the good things from outward. But inside, I don't have the morale or I don't fear anything. I only fear maybe a pastor. I only fear some members of the church. And I only fear some people. And, and I say, I don't want to do this because maybe my pastor might see me or someone else might see me. So that's not a true Christianity. That's a very different thing. That's coercion and is not uh, what um, Christianity should all uh, be about. All right. So it is impossible to become a Christian. Generally, it is very impossible to become a true Christian out of duress. It's impossible, we can say that. It may be possible to force someone to engage in a religious ceremony or, a, you know, mouth words to a, play, uh, to a prayer. Maybe somebody can say some prayers like the sinner's prayer or things like that. You can force them, all that, okay? But um, being a true Christian is about... Uh, it's about believing in Jesus Christ. It's about understanding. Because uh, that's why you see the sinner's prayer does not save. Because it's just something that you are maybe coerced in some way. You're told, believe this or else it's going to happen like this. Oh, give me, let, let me read that sinner's prayer and just, you see. So somebody just read the sinner's prayer and he thinks that he's saved, but he's not. Are you seeing the point here? Okay. So it's about being born again by the Spirit of God. And no amount of human pressure can force the Spirit's hand. You cannot force the Spirit of God into people by force. It, it can't work like that. The God does not work like that. Where is the free will? Are you seeing the point here? And the God knows the heart of every person. You might coerce them. You might try to push them. You might try to tell them, you see, if you don't do this, this is going to happen. You might scare them about hell and they, and they get... They become Christians out of, because I don't want to go to hell, but they don't really understand why we believe in Jesus. Then that's still false conversion. Are you seeing the point? So regeneration cannot be externally imposed. All right. Regeneration cannot be externally imposed. It has to come from within, from inside you. All right. And uh, some religious leaders in history, have taken up the sword to compel others to join their ranks. For example, in the Catholic Church back in the days, you uh, during the Spanish Inquisition, if you ever heard about the Spanish Inquisition, let me ch say, check if I have Spanish um, Inquisition. If you ever heard about this, there is a time when uh, Catholics, they really, really, really so much uh, pushed people into becoming, into converting into Catholicism, okay? uh it was around um, around these years 1648 and around there all right so now this spanish inquisition people were literally killed and they were martyred all right by the catholics uh, those who did not want to become uh, you know to convert now this is what we are calling the false conversion you see people were crucified they were killed so how can you force someone to believe in something that he doesn't want to believe are you seeing the point so it happened so much back in those days. People were hanged even upside down and things like that because they did not want to convert. They did not want to believe. And uh, 
this is what we are talking about okay about almost 50 million people that were killed in the spanish inquisition it was really terrible so most people converted because they just feared i, I don't want to be killed i just let me just convert and that's and people they think oh because i've converted so many people now into my religion then god is going to be happy no god is not uh, where is the free will because uh, these kind of things there is no free will that's why catholic is a false it's a false church because how can you do this and you expect uh, do you expect jesus the jesus we know of heaven he'll be like these people they they were killed because they did not believe they were believing that's 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 not how jesus was doing his things all right it's not exactly that's not, not the jesus we believe in because jesus laid down his life and invited us to follow him he invited us to follow him his kingdom functions differently from what the world is used to. The world is used to forcing people into things, politics, you follow this party, follow that party, do this, do that. Jesus fo fo does his things in a very different way, all right? Um, do you remember what Jesus told Pilate, all right? Look at this. Jesus told Pilate something here. My kingdom is not of this world. In John 18, verse 36, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom now not from hence. You see, Jesus himself is telling, uh, 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 is telling uh, Pilate that I'm not fighting for this worldly kingdom that you're seeing. So <laughs> if I was fighting for this, I could have told my disciples to come and fight for me. But uh, it's not about this world. You see, many people are pushing a kingdom of this world that's why you will see them fighting and spanish inquisition and islam they're trying to bomb people those who do not want to become uh, uh, to convert into islam and hinduism the same thing and different religions all over the world they're, they are forcing people because they are fighting for this world but for us we don't focus on this world we focus on a very different kind of kingdom so we have to understand that forced conversion also contradicts absolutely contradicts the free will which was given in the garden of eden god created man in his own image and he gave him a free will you can either do this or this the choice is yours so where is the free will here we extend the invitation to to all of those who want to be saved you tell them what are the benefits of be being saved what jesus did for you 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 are supposed to die but then jesus did this for you so it is your choice your free will your free will to be saved whether you want it, well. If you don't want it, well. It's okay. The choice is yours. You see, that's how Christianity is all about. But we do not constrain them and tell them, you have to do as per what I want. So we recognize that people must repent and believe on their own as the Holy Spirit works in their hearts. Okay? We have to repent on our own. Okay? Let me show you this. In the book of John, uh, John 16 verse 8 it is your own choice for you to repent if you want to repent it's your own choice if you don't want it's okay it's still your own choice nobody's supposed to coerce you or to push you into this okay they can tell you but they can't force you into converting so look at this and when he's come he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment all right so the holy spirit is the one who is who, who is who is a uh, uh drawing you close to god but then it is your choice it is for you to make that choice and decision to be able to say i will be saved or i'll not be saved so when you push someone and you put them into an angle whereby they have nothing else but to say yes then that's a false conversion that's why you'll see some people they are saved they seem to be saved and later on you hear they uh they backslid or they went away I believe that a Christian cannot backslide. Why? Because uh, it's out of understanding. It's not out of coercion. All right. So Jesus alluded to the sinner's free will as he spoke to a rebellious Jerusalem. You remember? Okay. Jesus himself, he was saying, you guys have longed to gather you. Jesus have had all the power. He has all the power. Why, why is it that uh, he, just, he doesn't just uh, pick them up and tell you, come here and be converted, become my disciples? You know, all of you believe in me. No, because he has to give people free will. 
Look at this. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. This is Jesus speaking. Which killeth the prophets and stoneth them that are sent unto thee. You see, Jesus is trying to tell them, hear the prophets. They are trying to tell you the truth, but you stone them. And remember, Jesus is very powerful. How often would I have gathered thy children together? I would have gathered you together and brought you unto myself. As a hen does gather her brood under her wings, and you will not. You see? Jesus is looking forward. I want to gather you. I want to make you close to me. I want to bring you close to me. I, I really want to be your Lord and Savior. But you will not accept. Why? Because they have a free will. Only the people who understand what Jesus wants to do to them, then they will be able to accept. But others, they will not. All right? Are you seeing the point here? And in Acts chapter 16, I'm going to show you in just a bit. Paul and Silas, do you remember? Paul and Silas, they met a man in the Greek city of Philippi who asked a very important question about salvation. What must I do to, me, to be saved? You remember that question? We know at least three things about this man. All right? He was a jailer, he was a pagan, and he was desperate. You see three things? Three things? He was a jailer. He worked, uh, you, you know, in a, in, a, in a prison, okay? He was a jailer. He was a, uh, a pagan, and he was desperate. And uh, he had been on the verge of suicide when Paul stopped him. And uh, this man asked Paul, what must I do to be saved? He was in a point of, I want. You see, it was not in a point of coercion. It was a point of want. I want to know, what must I do to be saved? Let me show you in the book of Acts. Uh, 16 verse 30 look at this and brought them out and said sir what must i do to be saved you see paul did not come and silas and tell this person you have to do this to be saved you or else no this man he's the one who asks them what must i do you see the aspect of the free will here and the very fact that uh, this man asked the question shows that he recognized his need for salvation. He saw only death for himself. All right? And he knew that he needed help. And that's the kind of help that he asked Paul and Silas. Hey, Paul. Hey, Silas. What must I do? This is me. I need it right now. It is my free will. I've decided I want it. All right? Are you seeing this one? So, the fact that he asked Paul and Silas shows that he believed that they had the answer. He knew that these people, they are messengers of God and they have the answer which I'm looking for. And that answer comes swiftly and simply in verse 31. Look at this. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thine house. You see, he knew that these are men of God and they have the answer. So you being a man of God, you don't force your answers to people. You tell them, you tell them the gospel and then the, the Holy Spirit con convicts them. And then after he convicts them, then it is their choice to believe. Are you seeing the point here? So this story of the jailer goes ahead to show us that uh, this jailer's life began displaying a difference right away. Immediately after he believed, out of his wanting, not out of coercion, he started to display uh, the life of a believer, someone who has believed out of choice, not out of coercion. All right? You have to understand that this man's uh, conversion was based on faith, believing. All right? He had to trust Jesus and nothing else. And his faith included a belief that Jesus died for our sins and he rose again. Because that was the message that Paul and Silas was preaching. Remember, Paul and Silas, what they were preaching, let me just show you. So you have to understand, the believing that they were believing, it's all about something which they were preaching out. Oops, I don't know where I went. I got lost. Or oh, 10 verse 9. Yes, let me show you this one. Romans 10, 9. Look at this. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. This is a message that Paul was preaching and Silas 
All right? For with the heart a man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you believe from your heart, and then you confess. Confessing is not seen as prayer. Confessing is explaining what you have already believed from your heart. So you're only expressing it out. This is what I have believed. This is what I know. This is how I feel. Confess. Like you tell somebody, confess it out to me. What exactly is in your heart? So first, it has to be in your heart so that you can confess it out. Are you seeing the point here? So, and also, you understand 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Uh, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which you received and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first that which I also received, how that Christ, that the word how is really important. How Christ died. How did he die? He died by shedding his blood. Because the shedding of blood is no forgiveness of sins. So, you see, how that Christ died for our sins, he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That was the message that Paul and Silas were preaching. So, this guy, the jailer, he understood what they were preaching. And then now he believed in Jesus. Not only just believing in Jesus, the person, but exactly on what Jesus did for him. Seeing the point here? So, the salvation of this uh, jailer was anything, anything but a forced conversion rather it was based on his own personal desire and choice to place his faith in christ so to convert someone to christianity we must believe that jesus is the son of god who died and rose again we have to understand jesus is our lord and savior and what he did not only about who jesus is but what he did for us he died for our sins was buried and rose again are you seeing the point? So, salvation comes from a point of understanding, not from a point of coercion. Alright? So, we must agree with God that we are sinners, number one, in need of salvation. And we must trust in Jesus alone to save. And when we do this, God promises to save us and to give us the Holy Spirit who will make us new creations. He makes us a new creation, a new person. Alright? And, uh, being a Christian, you must have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not just saying something. I always like to explain using the sinner's prayer. People just think you say something and uh, it's like you sign those papers and put them in a wardrobe. No, it's not about saying something and then now you're saved and then now go and live like the devil. No, it's a personal relationship. And a relationship can only be there when two people agree. Two cannot walk together unless they agree. You cannot walk with Jesus unless you agree with him. So for those who live like the devil, then they don't agree with Jesus Christ. They don't agree. Maybe they were just forced into becoming Christians. They were just falsely converted. So that's why they don't agree. Jesus says, this is wrong, but you see it is right. So how can you be together and you, how can you be together and you don't agree? Are you seeing the point here? So uh, being a Christian is having that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that one results in forgiveness of sins and eternity in heaven. Something like that cannot be forced. Cannot be forced. Because true religion is not coerced. Alright? So guys, if you're out there and you became a Christian out of coercion or out of uh, just people forcing you or telling you things that you don't understand, then you have to recheck your salvation. Ask yourself, do I agree with Jesus? Do I agree with his words? Do I agree with his, uh, his uh, teachings? Do I want him to have a relationship with me? Because that's the only way you can know that your salvation is true. Faith without works is dead. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that works are saving you. But faith which does not have the proof showing that we are for sure going hand in hand. Then it means you guys, you, you never believed. You never, uh, you never understood each other in the first place. Because the reason why you cannot walk together, you cannot have same fruits, is because you never agreed with Jesus. Are you getting the point? So it's really, really, really important. I hope this video has been able to um, help you to understand. And if you're still not saved, please get saved. This is, these are the last days. We're heading towards the end of time. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Also, you can share and subscribe to 
uh, watch more videos and at the description below we have a couple of other channels please go and check them out and see what you have so that also you can also share to your friends let people hear the gospel god bless you and have a good time